For photo printing, this is actually where this printer gets really cool. Uh, color spaces is something that I really like about this printer and Epson. Hey, it's Adam here from adaminsights.com and today I want to talk about printing your photos at home. I never actually used to print my photos at home. Well, I mean, sometimes I did, but I'd, I'd avoid it because ink cartridges are expensive. Uh, I've had bad experiences with the paper jamming, that expensive photo paper jamming. Uh, getting the colour to look right on the final print uh, used to be a hassle. The colours would always go funky and wrong. And then something random would just happen when it was uh, printing, like the printer would just jam or lose power, I don't know, it would just be a pain. And I found it hard in general just to print photos at home and get it right first time. And I'm sure that a lot of people watching this video have had the same experience, right? And then, I mean, there was printing documents at home. And again, that used to be an issue. I used to find um, paper used to jam up or ink used to smudge and then I'd want to reprint something and then just because one colour was running low you couldn't do it and you had to try and sort something else out, right? So I abandoned uh, inkjet printers uh, at home in 2010 and uh, never really got back into them and when I wanted to print photos I would uh, use the retailers or professional uh, printers um, for photo work or graphic design printing or just go down to my local library for uh, document printing. But I wanted to try printing at home again, so I'm trying out the new Epson cartridgeless systems. I've chosen the ET2650. Uh, most of uh, what I print uh, has been photos, and the results have been excellent. Easily on par with consumer level photo printed offered at the retailers, and actually, I think it's actually a little better. The ET2650 uses just four ink tanks, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, CMYK. That is important. I know there are much higher end 5, 6, 8 or 12 colour uh, photo uh, printers out there uh, that yes will deliver uh, better results by being able to print a much broader range of tones, but I want to be realistic here. Unless you are hanging photos in a fine art gallery, you just don't need to go to that level. And unless you're uh, shooting film or uh, high-end uh, digital, such as a 5D, Leica system, D800 uh, range, or Hasselblad, or something around that level, uh, you're really just not going to uh, even have enough information in your original uh, photo files to benefit uh, from a printer of uh, that level. I've only ever had my photos on display in a fine art gallery twice over uh, 10 years, both of which were really proud moments uh, for me. But uh, when I wanted uh, those, print those photos printed at a one size, I just went through a professional printer and uh, used their system and I got a great uh, result. Most of my photos are consumed on the web, um, but when they are printed, they're printed in magazines or uh, catalogues and flyers. And uh, that's really important to remember because these things are printed in four colours, CMYK, exactly what this printer is. So therefore I've uh, got a responsibility really to make sure that my images are going to be optimal when they're printed in CMYK, four colours. And that's what I really like about uh, this particular printer uh, because I can edit my images uh, and I can edit my uh, designs in um, uh, Photoshop and uh, InDesign. I can output in a CMYK profile from these uh, programs and then I can send it direct to uh, the Epson uh, ET2650 and it doesn't do any funky colour shifting and I know exactly what my ink levels are going to be when my design hits the paper in this printer. In fact, and for photo printing, this is actually where this printer gets really cool. Uh, color spaces is something that I really like about this printer and Epson. A major hassle with uh, printing uh, photos at home, as just about anyone would know, is uh, getting your colors uh, to look 
the same on the print as they do on the screen in your editing program. Now, admittedly, I think this is easier if you're using something like an iMac or a MacBook Pro, something with a calibrated uh, screen. But when you actually install um, the uh, printer, uh, you get a new color space uh, that uh, you can uh, choose uh, to work from. So, when you're uh, editing your images, say in Lightroom, you can select soft proofing and select the Epson uh, color space and uh, you can edit uh, your colors, um, balance uh, your levels and your exposure around that color space and you can see what you're doing on uh, your screen. I then export from Lightroom using that same color space in a 16-bit uh, 300 uh, dpi TIFF. Subsequently I then open that up in the Epson EasyPrint uh, photo uh, program and send it to, to uh, the printer. Uh, over my wireless network, it's very fast. Um, I don't uh, have any delay, even with uh, the five, six, seven hundred uh, megabyte uh, TIFF files. And the result I get looks like it does on my iMac screen. It's great. Um, I've never had a system like this uh, before. I'm really excited and I uh, really enjoy using it. And I guess I don't actually feel too guilty about printing uh, loads of photos, uh, even directly uh, off of an SD card um, of uh, my phone, directly into uh, the printer, because the inks are just going to last. Uh, the setup for this printer does take a long time. It actually took me about an hour, uh, because you actually have to fill each of the ink tanks uh, separately with uh, the bottles uh, that uh, come with the printer. And I got a little bit nervous for my white carpet um, when I was doing uh, that. Uh, also, it does quite a funky uh, uh, nozzle uh, charging thing when you first uh, set it up. So allow an hour to uh, set it up. For home documents, uh, if you've got kids who want to print lots and lots of stuff, this is a great printer uh, for you. Uh, even for the uh, home office, because Epson says that you can get uh, up to 6,500 uh, A4 uh, sheets out of uh, the printer. Uh, but if you do want to print uh, material that has a certain uh, wow factor, um, with really sharp uh, looking uh, text and um, graphs uh, then you really probably should be considering a uh, color laser printer because of the way that toner um, responds to uncoated uh, paper uh, stocks as opposed to inkjet uh, ink. When printing photos there's no banding, uh, there's no color shifting the photos look sharp, uh, the colours are great, you, you just can't tell that it's been done on a uh, home inkjet printer. The only thing that lets it down, and for me it's not a big deal, uh, is that you can't print uh, borderless. But for what I like to do, that's not so much an issue, I actually quite like the white border. It prints uh, Word and Excel documents lightning fast. It was easy to connect it to my home Wi-Fi network. And uh, it's been a great Wi-Fi printer and I can print from the iMac, the MacBook, the iPad, the iPhone, guests can print, no problem. And you can uh, print direct from uh, the SD card, uh, which um, actually shows up as a uh, network uh, drive um, as well when uh, you're using uh, the printer as a Wi-Fi uh, printer. That's really cool actually. Uh, the scanner is so-so, it works, no problem. For me, as a, um, a lover of film photography, uh, the ultimate test uh, for this uh, printer came from uh, digitally uh, scanning um, some uh, color negative film at the equivalent of 70 megapixels. By the way, um, for those of you familiar with this channel, you'll know that I always say that film is still better than digital, and it still is. But I scanned uh, this film, I balanced uh, my color, I got it uh, to look uh, brilliant, and I sent it off uh, to print on uh, A3, uh, A4 uh, size uh, paper through this printer. The result was on par with uh, printing that photograph using a wet chemical uh, traditional photo, um, photography uh, printing uh, method in the lab. Now, these printers are a little bit expensive. It cost me 500 Australian dollars. Am I happy uh, with it for that money? Yeah.